Okay, everyone, and here I am. It's Steve Cooper, and we are on the phone with the great pastor, James Madden. He's beloved all over YouTube, YouTube and the Internet. YouTube banned him, and I'm banned, too, so I, I sort of understand where he's coming from. Uh, how are you, Pastor? How are you doing today, sir? I'm just fine, Steve, and I'm delighted to be able to talk to you as well and to your audience today. Okay, we thank you for coming on. And, you know, first I want to get into... You know, I, you're on Michael Savage. Um, so you've been on his show several times. And, you know, I'm seeing a pattern here, sir. Uh, Fox News refuses to re uh, report in depth Michael Savage being banned by the UK and this Obama eligibility case. So this is two serious issues that they seem to be avoiding. What's your opinion on that? Well, it is clear that those of us who, and I'm recent to this genre of radio talk or um, broadcasting political issues and views, I've been catapulted into this because of the gravity of our national situation with the illegality of Barack Hussein Obama, the long-legged Mac Daddy being the alleged president. Having said that, there is always a sense of camaraderie with those that you work with, and for Michael Savage to have been singled out uh, by the UK government uh, to be banned uh, to travel to such a, a, a state, and for other and, and, and given no specific reason except the fact that he's outspoken um, and, and truth telling, um, and we are a nation of the First Amendment, and we like to laud it so much that if that is the way. You know what? I was also uh, pondering, because I heard your, um, your opinion on that, where you said that you feel that they were uh, bought or sold out. And, you know, do you think it's also, do you think Murdoch is maybe telling them uh, not to report this because they're afraid of being responsible for the uh, pushing the issue that could bring down the first black American president? Do you feel that Murdoch is uh, sort of afraid of this issue? You, you've you've, uh, you've phrased it in several ways. Uh, for several questions, let me try to answer them because I can remember the, the way you phrased it. First of all, to respond to Rupert Murdoch, he has been a maverick uh, in the news business for several years and has always enjoyed challenges. Indeed, Fox News was established to be anti, uh, if you will, mainstream media. That was his intent and purpose. He didn't set it up to try to flow in the same stream of ABC, CBS, and NBC. He wanted to flow just the opposite way, meaning that challenging the establishment is nothing new for Rupert Murdoch uh, when purchasing the polls of the Wall Street Journal and other publications that he's ran globally. He has made a living of being a maverick, a challenging person, and challenging the status quo. So for him to challenge global or you know, political issues is not unfounded uh, or un unthinkable for him. The, the, the matter of him being concerned about Obama as the first African-American president is perhaps the last thing that's on Rupert Murdoch's mind or anyone else's mind for that matter within that level of news gathering activity. They're not concerned whether Obama's black, they're not concerned whether he's black and that the black people will rise up and create problems for the world. That's not what they're concerned about. I think it's just a basic matter of 
him, to expose him. So uh, they have they have gone ahead and made the decision. This will make us money, and they're actually making money. But another thing I think is that needs to, that you focused on that needs to be uh, carefully examined is whether or not a board meeting was called and memos were passed and discussions were held and lawyers were gathered and the anchors were told do not under any circumstance discuss the birth certificate eligibility issue. Do not invite any guests who are proficient in such. Do not entertain any questions on your radio interviews. Do not talk about it. Do not allow it to be a part to be breathed anywhere within the Fox broadcast medium. If such meetings were held and they were told uh, to act accordingly, then that's conspiracy to commit treason. And if so, then a lot of heads are going to roll eventually. Yeah, uh, you know, and I, I really have a suspicion that that memo and meeting did happen. <laughs> I, th I really think you're onto something because, you know, even before the Orly, K Orly Tate's case was dismissed, uh, they would not even mention that there was a court date on this issue. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I, I, there has been a meeting, as you stated, and I'm going I'm to find out, or we're going to find out, right? and uh, we'll, we'll be able to, 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 to uh, demonstrate that there was a conspiracy at the very highest level. I think what they failed to recognize was that there would be, they thought that they could send their big guns out like Bill O'Reilly and say that the birth certificate issue is bogus and tell the American people that Obama is a legitimate citizen and people would just go away. Right. That was a, that was a poor, detrimental miscalculation on their behalf. We are not going away. That's right. And, you know, I keep people, some people still approach me on uh, the Internet and say, oh, why don't you just let it go? And I tell them straight out, look, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big Fox News fan, but I'm nobody's puppet, and I don't need to uh, parrot the same thing that Beck and O'Reilly and Hannity say. I, I uh, have done my own investigation since Phil, Philip Berg uh, uh, first broke this on the Michael Savage show in August 08, and the media... Uh, uh, totally um, silenced uh, any anything about this issue prior to the election. So, and, and it's continuing still after the election. Well, the very fact that they're so silent on it indicates that it is definitely a a, uh, a fact that he is not he is not qualified. He's not eligible, and they can't demonstrate it. More specifically, I believe they're in such a trap is that they can't go back and re-correct records because there's so much they'd have to do going back through all those schools, Columbia University, Pandahau. Right. Uh, they'd have to deal with Jakarta. They'd have to deal with the passport. There's just too much. I mean, if it was just one Watergate break-in that they could do and it would solve the problem, bam, they would do it and then come out with phony evidence. But there's just too much to have to cover to make it work. So the issue is in silence and hoping and praying that I would shut up or that you would shut up or that Tate would go away, but it ain't going to happen that way. It's not going to happen. Why should we? We know that this man is not eligible. He's that he's illegal. All right, and not only that, and again, you have brought it up many times, uh, the the uh, fact that his father is uh, uh, was a British citizen, which, you know, if that makes Obama a British citizen, that doesn't sound natural born to me. There is no way they can they could even get around the 1948 British citizen naturalization citizenship clause, which meant anyone who was a British subject, any of their children born anyway in the world, were also then likewise British subject as well. Obama, by decree of the British government and this 1948 Citizenship Act, is a British subject. Right.